Good morning, YouTubers. This is Meredith Mechanics. We are going to talk fuel trim today. I am extremely tired. I stayed up all night editing videos and trying to come up with new ideas of what to talk about. And I figured fuel trim would be a good idea. So it is a fairly simple concept and really, really helpful, especially with diagnostics. It can tell you a lot about how your engine is operating. And this refers to uh, electronically fuel injected engines, um, older vehicles, older applications that had carburetors. Um, it was a me mechanically adjusted system. And uh, basically the goal of this system is to maintain the stoichiometric value of 14.7 units of air to one unit of fuel. As you guys probably know, internal combustion engines require fuel and air to operate. Well, that fuel and air, they have found that 14.7 grams of air to one gram of fuel really is the best ratio for combustion. If you want efficiency, um, if you want clean exhaust, stuff like that. So, in today's electronically fuel injected systems, your ECM is programmed to maintain that ratio and it will do essentially whatever it has to do to keep that ratio. So um, the first diagrams that I drew, the top one is a super simple um, kind of diagram of a feedback control loop and what that is is your ECM, your engine control module, or your powertrain control module, whatever you want to call it, um, that receives feedback from various sensors. And it takes that feedback, and it is what controls your fuel pulse width, um, which essentially maintains that ratio. And then the feedback um, to what it's been doing is read by the O2 sensors in your exhaust. And uh, depending on what the feedback is, is what the computer will do next. So if you've got good feedback, the computer's not going to make any changes to what it's currently doing. And if you've got bad feedback, um, the computer's going to do what it has to do to reach that ratio again. So my second diagram um, is a little bit more detailed, kind of. And... Basically, what I drew was the sensors that are involved in maintaining your fuel trim. So, you've got the intake to the engine, you've got your exhaust. On your intake, you have various sensors that measure your volume. Um, you know, mass airflow sensor, that's a big one. It tells the computer how much air is coming into the engine. The computer takes that data and controls how much fuel it adds to it. Now, if you have a leak, for whatever reason, if you have a leak, leak in any of those air ducts or um, a clogged filter or whatever, that reading is no longer accurate. And that's when you start to have fuel trim problems because the computer no longer is receiving um, reliable data because the sensors haven't picked up you know, the unmetered air and it will be reflected in the up, upstream O2 sensor in front of the CAT, the catalytic converter. So depending on whether it's running rich or lean, um, the ECM will receive data from your O2 sensor saying, hey, you need to add or take away fuel, and the ECM will do so at least until that problem is fixed. So that's kind of, uh, that's a real basic overview of the feedback control loop. And uh, so let's get into kind of the nitty gritty of it. Um, and I come down here, I drew three graphs. And the first graph is short term fuel trim. The second graph is uh, for an O2 sensor. And this is your long term fuel trim. And for now, just ignore the red lines. Um, when we're talking fuel trim, if we're in a perfect world, um, the computer would not have to add or take away any fuel at all. So this is time, this is the amount of fuel, this is in percentage. Um, typically when you reach um, anywhere from 
about 25 to 30 percent more or less fuel that's when you get a fuel trim check engine light um, and you need to address it sometimes if it's bad enough you can actually have a no start condition or very poor running condition because remember um, that ratio needs to be met for efficient combustion so I drew kind of two examples here and th the reason these lines are already on the graph um, is I was explaining to somebody else a little bit earlier so let's talk about a lean condition a lean condition is when there is too much air entering the in engine meaning you have unmetered air coming in air that is not being picked up by your sensors and that happens when you have a leak in your air ducts you have like a vacuum leak um, stuff like that and if you have too much air coming in for the amount of fuel that the computer is giving the engine then your exhaust obviously is going to reflect that because your combustion won't be efficient and that's exactly what your upstream O2 sensor is supposed to pick up so your upstream O2 sensor is going to pick that up and send that data back to the computer and say hey you're you haven't met that ratio you you are off you need to add fuel to correct that stoichiometric value so what the computer is going to do is if everything's running hunky-dory great we're at zero the computer's not adding or taking away anything however if we have a vacuum leak um, the computer is going to add fuel so let's say the computer is adding 50 15 percent of fuel um, based on the data it's getting from its upstream O2 sensor and it's going to add the 15 percent it's going to keep adding fuel until it reaches that stoichiometric value once it reaches that value it's going to flatline again and that's the new baseline so if it maintains that baseline for a while that's when it comes over to long-term fuel trim which is what the computer remembers um, so the next time you start up your car it will automatically start at 15 percent added fuel now let's say you find and correct that vacuum leak well once you find it and correct it it's going to be reflected in the exhaust again and it will now be too rich so the computer will once again correct it by removing fuel until it reaches its happy value see where I'm going with this the computer smart it, it likes its perfect ratio so um, that would be an example of a lean condition a rich condition can happen um, for a various amount of reasons and uh, a big one would be like a clogged fuel filter or uh, air filter um, too much fuel pressure injecting uh, leaking injectors you know for whatever reason the engine is running rich meaning you have too much fuel and not enough air so if the computer picks up that it's got um, too much fuel then guess what it's going to start taking away fuel until it reaches its happy value once it reaches its ratio it's going to flatline again and when you guys fix the problem that's when the computer is going to have to correct so it's a constant changing situation um, the computer is very smart it's designed to match that ratio it wants to be at that ratio all the time because it wants to have the engine running as efficiently as possible and so that's where this graph and the long term come in the long term is what the computer remembers uh, for future start situations if you've been running lean for a long time the computer is going to store that data and keep it like that at least until um, whatever problem has been fixed so let's talk about the O2 sensors real quick um, the upstream O2 sensor is kind of the critical one um, it is the primary one that provides the feedback to the ECM um, 
based on what the exhaust is. So the upstream O2 sensor is kind of the important one. The downstream O2 sensor um, just kind of relays how the cat, the catalytic converter is doing. So we don't really need to pay attention to the downstream O2 sensor quite as much. But the upstream O2 sensor, the way it works is when it gets hot, um, its voltage alternates. It's oscillating. And it oscillates between 0.1 volts to 0.9. And it does this fairly quickly, as in milliseconds. So a functioning O2 sensor should look like a sine wave. Now, if you have a scan tool and you can see live data, you will see this. Um, if you don't, unfortunately, you're going to have to take it in and get it scanned. If the sensor is improperly functioning, let's say it's not getting any kind of feedback and it kind of flatlines, then what the computer does is the computer goes to its regular stored data, um, its startup data, which is rich. Um, when you first turn on your car, obviously all your sensors are going to be cold, your engine's going to be cold. Um, with a cold exhaust, your sensors won't be able to read anyways until the exhaust gets warm enough to start providing good feedback. So when you first start your car, sometimes you might notice that the idle is much higher for a few minutes, at least until the engine is warm enough to start getting live feedback from the sensors. Um, and until then, the ECM is going off its pre-programmed um, values to make sure the engine warms up kind of as quickly as possible. And then once it gets starts getting reliable feedback from these sensors, that's when it starts going to the live um, feedback from the sensors. Now, it does the same thing when the sensor fails. If the O2 sensor has failed completely, then the engine's going to automatically go to its pre-programmed values and it's going to run extremely rich until the problem is fixed, which unfortunately can cause a no start or very, very poor operation, and you will know. So um, that's kind of a basic overview of fuel trim. And fuel trim obviously can tell you a lot. It's, it's very good to understand how a feedback control loop works. Um, keep in mind this loop is only working when the engine is in its closed circuit, meaning the engine is up to operating temp. It is no longer going off its pre-programmed values in the ECM and uh, it's receiving that live data from the sensors. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any uh, questions, don't be afraid to ask and uh, thanks for watching.